Welcome. Welcome to another celebration of praise and worship at Wesley Freedom United Methodist Church here in Eldersburg, Maryland. My name is Tony Love. I serve as one of the pastors here at the church, and I want to welcome you to this great day of praise and worship, prayer, preaching, and even opportunity to respond to how God is moving in your life. I invite you to come with me as we enter into worship that we might bless a God who has blessed us over and over again. And we might encounter a God who stands ready to let us know that truly we are precious in God's sight. Come, go with me. Let us enter with thanksgiving and let us praise. Will you join me in responding to God's call to worship? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his surpassing greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with clanging cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let, Let everything, everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And now let us lift our voices to praise the Lord with our opening hymn. Sing praise to God who reigns above. Each 
false idol from its throne. For Christ is Lord, and Christ alone, to God all praise and glory. Will you pray with me? Holy, gracious, and loving God, we come before you again this day to lift our voices, to give you praise, to raise our thanksgivings to you, and also to come before you as your church, your servants, your people on earth who seek to do your will and who walk in your ways. We come before you with all that is on our hearts, our whole being. We come before you with those things that have caused us to smile, those things that have caused us to weep. We ask you to be with us in this place. Wherever we're coming from, we ask you to fill it with the power of your Holy Spirit, that now may be a time of true worship, that we may become, even though scattered, joined together as one people in knowing that you are always with us, that we are your body, and we are knit together closer than we can even understand. We ask your spirit of hope and healing to be with all those struggling around the world, anyone fighting disease, anyone whose health needs you to be a comforter and a strengthener. God, you are the great physician, you knit us together in our mother's wombs. You formed our bodies from the dust of the earth, and we entrust our care to you. We know that your plans for us are more wondrous than we can even comprehend, and we ask you to shine your light upon our path, that we may walk in the ways that you have appointed for us. Let us be your true servants here, let us care for one another. Empower us to truly be the body of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. That same Christ that while he was in ministry with us here on earth, taught us to pray. And so today, we follow in his words and pray to you the prayer he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. the 
thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth. Thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with ten thousand beside. Today we're going to be celebrating and talking about Mother's Day, and I hope you guys notice that I am sitting in my one of my favorite spots in the sanctuary, and I am pretending that all of my friends are sitting on the sanctuary steps, and we are getting ready to have a fabulous time hanging out together. I'm also pretending that the choir is up there with all their happy and joyful faces, so I hope that you can pretend that you're here in the sanctuary with me. So Mother's Day is a bit complicated. It has a wide variety of emotions. Um, this year particularly because many of us, if we are lucky enough to have moms, um, may not be able to see them, may not be able to visit them, may not be able to give them a hug. So that might make us feel just a little bit sad. Um, sometimes um, you are far away from your kids, even if they live close by. Sometimes you were not blessed to be a mom, and you hunger for that, so you have a little bit of sadness. Um, sometimes your mom has not always been the mom that you hoped for or imagined, and you have found nurture and support through maybe a mom at church or a mom in the neighborhood. But regardless of your whole wide range of emotions, for me, Mother's Day is about love. And sometimes um, love is hard. Love is complicated as well. And God made moms fully human, so they are doing their best, and some days are better than other days, but underneath all of that, there is love. So we are very lucky this morning to be able to go to some of our friends out and about in Eldersburg, and we are going to hear some scripture, and then we are going to hear some reflections on the most important thing my mom taught me. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. Thank you, Mommy, for teaching me how to multiply. I love you. When I was a child, my mother instilled in us constantly not to lie. 
And of course, at times when you were a kid or you snuck something you shouldn't or you did something you shouldn't, you try to get away with it. But my mother would always say, look me in the eye. And you could not look my mother in the eye and tell a lie. And so she instilled in us from that day forward to, to not lie, to be truthful in a kind and loving way, in a God way. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you, Mom, for teaching me to love life, love God, and find joy in everything that I do. Happy Mother's Day. I love you, Mom. Good morning. This is uh, I'm Pam from uh, Wesley Freedom, and I might know me from youth group or middle school, Sunday school, or as Rachel's mom or Vinny's mom. But um, today we're celebrating Mother's Day, and it makes me think of my mom because this will be my first Mother's Day without her. Uh, she passed away last September. So one of the things that she taught me growing up was I love for being outdoors and in the sun and digging in the dirt. She liked to plant a lot of flowers every spring and um, this is one of her favorite plants so it always reminds me of her. She also liked daisies um, but I always get clippings of these and take them in the house and this year I've expanded our garden in the back of the house so those are kind of things that my mom's taught me and just this she was always my champion, so I try to be my champion for my children. So I hope you all have a great Mother's Day. The most important thing my mother has taught me is to worship God, to love people, and to share with others. I thank God for my mom. Three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. I hope that this has given you some time to reflect about your mom, about the things that maybe she taught you, or maybe you had a spiritual mom and that person taught you some things, or maybe your dad was the one that instilled some special things. Whoever it was, take a chance, an opportunity today and let them know that and remember whether your mom is here, whether you get to see her, um, whether you get to see your children, that love never ends. Happy Mother's Day. For our celebration, our gospel lesson is from John. John chapter 19, beginning at verse 17. And it reads, And he carried the cross to the place known as the skull. In Aramaic, it is the place called Golgotha. There Jesus was nailed to the cross, and on each side of him, a man was also nailed to a cross. Pilate ordered the charge against Jesus be written on a board and put above the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Those words were written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. The place where Jesus was taken wasn't far from the city, and many of the people read the charge against him. So the chief priests went to Pilate and said, Why did you write that he was king of the Jews? You should have written, He claimed to be king of the Jews. But Pilate told them, What is written will not be changed. After the soldiers had nailed Jesus to the cross, they divided up his clothes into four parts, one for each of them. But his outer garment was made of one single piece of cloth, and it did not have any seams. The soldiers said to each other, let's not rip it apart. We will gamble to see who gets it. This happened so that the scriptures would come true, which say, they divided up my clothes and gambled for my garments. The soldiers then did what they had decided. Jesus' mother stood beside his cross with his sister and Mary, the wife of Clopas. Mary Magdalene was standing there too. When Jesus saw his mother, and his favorite disciple with her, 
he said to his mother, this man is now your son. Then he said to the disciple, she is now your mother. From then on, that disciple took her into his own home. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Beloved brothers and sisters in faith, greetings of grace and peace to you. On this day that is set aside where we pay tribute to, we acknowledge, we recognize moms, I want to say again, certainly, Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all of the women in our lives who have been such an important part, a significant role model in our lives. But we say thank you to moms who have birthed us, moms who have given us life, moms who have stepped up and stepped in, to moms who have showed up and given us guidance, to those who were mothers who chose us, and to mothers that we chose, to mothers who loved us from afar, to mothers who loved us until it hurt, to mothers of yesterday, today, and mothers of tomorrow, uh, to mothers who are no longer here with us. We say thank you. May God just continue to bless you because with grateful hearts we come acknowledging you this day. For this celebration of praise and worship and certainly with a leaning towards Mother's Day, I would like to invite our attention to our scripture lesson that we've heard it is out of the Gospel of John, chapter 19. And I simply want us to focus upon verse 25. It says something to the effect about the fact that near the cross of Jesus stood his mother. We heard that. Stood his mother, stood his mother's sister, Mary, and the wife of Clopas, and there was also Mary Magdalene. Here's where I want us to center. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother. If I might offer us a centering thought for this day, this celebration, I would ask us to consider a mother's appointment. Recently, beloved, I was thumbing through a telephone address book. For some of you, you're wondering, what is a telephone address book? Well, ask your parents or your grandparents, but there was a time where all we had were telephone address books. And I came across a business card. It was a business card for my doctor. On the front side was printed my doctor's name along with my doctor's partner's name. There was the address of the office and the important contact numbers. Uh, printed on the back side, there was certainly a, uh, a logo. It consisted of a blood pressure cup and uh, that instrument that we are familiar with for certainly examining eyes and ears and throats. Uh, it was also on the back side, there was space provided for noting when my next appointment date would be and its time. And at the very bottom of the business card, uh, there was printed this, we reserve the right to charge for appointments canceled or broken without a 24-hour notice. Now, this is common, it's standard language for doctors or for many professionals who work by appointment. It, it speaks of the importance that is placed upon making or keeping an appointment. It sounds very contractual. It even has some feel of being very legal. It seems very binding in some regards. I would have us to know that in the dictionary, an appointment is defined as engagement to meet someone. And the word, the root word, appoint, it means to fix as the time or the place for a meeting. I want you to hold that in mind, but let us return back to our scripture lesson. The Bible recorded that near the cross of Jesus stood his mother his mother. I need you to recall with me. I need you to understand this. I need you to place this in context. 
after he was celebrated in a procession into the city with loud shouts of Hosanna and the waving of palm branches, after he was sharing the Last Supper with his disciples, after the betrayal by Judas in the garden there where Judas, a follower of Jesus, sold Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver, after Jesus has been led to the high priest's home and then to Pilate's headquarters where Pilate found him not guilty of any crime, after the crowds have cried out the name of Barabbas to be released, stood his mother. After the thorns have been braided into a crown falling along the way of Calvary, having to ask that Simon would be employed to help Jesus carry his cross after being nailed to the cross, stood his mother. Joseph, his earthly father, was not there. All but the beloved disciple John. All the other disciples were nowhere to be found. A few faithful women had been in ministry with him. They are there with him, and there stood his mother. Stood. She wasn't bent over or broken. Mary knows that her son, her child, her baby, has been wrongly accused, falsely charged, been denied a fair trial, sentenced unjustly, an innocent man. It is her baby boy is facing death, the death penalty for a crime he didn't commit. There she stood. In the Greek, the word steo is used for stood. It means to stand, but it also means a point. Saints of God, Mary, his mother, stood near the cross, his cross, because she had an appointment. She had, as his mother, a fixed time and place for meeting her son and her savior. A divinely designed appointment that she could not miss or cancel because that is who she was. She was his mother. Not Mary, but his mother. Note how John penned it near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, not Mary. I submit to you on this day, John uses the title Mary. And not her name, excuse me, he uses the title of mother and not her name, Mary, to display for us, the reader, the characteristics of a mother. A mother is one who makes appointments with and for her child or children, even when the appointment may not be pleasant or favorable. Mother will be there. Even when we have disappointed our mothers with our decisions or our choices or our actions or our behaviors, our comments, our remarks, our attitude, our neglect or rebellion, mother is there. When you push the Greek word, seo, stood, it not only means a point, but it also implies covenant. Covenant is a strong word defined as a compact or agreement or a mutual agreement. We might say it's a contract, it's a bond between parties or persons to do something or to refrain from something or some action. His mother stood near his cross because she was in covenant with him. She was in covenant with him since his birth in a manger, there with him in the cradle, his teenage years, his years of being in ministry. She had a pact with Jesus, her son. She had a pact with him who would be her savior that did not end because of the shame of death upon a cross. She, his mother, she stood, she had an appointment. She was in covenant relationship with him from the beginning until the end. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother. A dear friend of mine shares a story about how history records in these United States of America during times when there were strains between a strain between race relationships. There were parts of our society where the haves and there were the have-nots, there were the privileged and there were those who were not privileged. 
It was a time where signs were across the states that indicated for whites only, or it might have said for coloreds only, but she talks about how history will record that oftentimes in court when young men of color would go to court and they would be there ready to be sentenced by a judge who was Caucasian in an effort to humiliate, in an effort to bring shame not only to the young man but also to the parent who had come, who was often more than likely the mother who was able to get off from work or the mother who was staying at home who could accompany her child to court. The judge would request that not only that the son would stand, but would ask the mother to stand as well. And when pronouncing the sentence, it was as if the judge was saying, not only on your child, but also on you as a mother, I pronounce this sentence. And so the mother would be there to take the humiliation, the sting and the pain of her child's sentence. A mother would be, would be there. Today, I just want to remind all of us, if you are blessed to have or have ever been blessed to have a mom who has stood by you doing the good, the bad, the ugly, and everything that might be in between, you ought to tell your mom, you ought to tell God, thank you. If you've ever been blessed or have been blessed to know a mother who has stood by you doing your foolishness, you ought to take the time today to lift your voice and tell her and tell God, thank you. If you have ever been blessed to receive love from or have ever received mama's love as she has stood by you during difficult times when others may have walked away, turned their backs on you, have left you or shunned you or talked about you, but you have known your mother has stood there with you, you ought to tell her and tell God, thank you. In our scripture lesson today, Mary, his mother, She's a reflection of our God, a God who is tender, committed, and very much loyal. There's a songwriter who penned words that said, God has always stood by my side. God has always been my guide. Whatever I need, I just pray because I know that the Lord will make a way. God has always stood right by my side. Through many heartaches and pains, through the storm and through the rain, sometimes when I was too weak to carry on, but God gave me strength, made me strong. God has always stood right by my side. When my friends walked away, turn their backs on me. God has always stood by my side. God shows up in Mary, the mother who stood by the cross of her son, Jesus. And today we ought to take a moment to celebrate all those mamas who have stood by us, have been by us. So beloved, take a moment. Take a moment to call your mom, Reach out to your mom, hug your mom, kiss your mom, say thank you to the mom who has showed up in your life and has always stood by you. God bless. And amen. Brothers and sisters, as you continue just to bask in God's presence and give thanks for those mothers who are in your life, I also want to invite you to give thanks to God for the gift of Jesus. I want to take a moment in our celebration just to say, if on today there is a feeling within your being, in your soul, in your spirit, that you would trust this God who shows up in Mary, trust this God who shows up in Jesus, and today you would make this a day of decision to choose Jesus, to be friend, Lord, and Savior, then I want to offer you the opportunity on behalf of your brothers and sisters who gather at Wesley Freedom, on behalf of your brothers and sisters in faith, if you would acknowledge Jesus to be the Christ, 
If you would believe that God has done a work in Christ Jesus to redeem and save your soul, if you would confess you are certainly a sinner in need of a Savior, I believe on your behalf, I believe with you today you have been saved. And I rejoice in your salvation. I, enjoy, I rejoice in your being placed in right relationship with God the Almighty. And I would pray that you will find yourself some friends and find yourself a faith family that will encourage you to continue to grow up in knowledge of Jesus Christ, to grow up in grace, to grow up in faith. It does our hearts good to know that another soul has been saved. I give thanks for you this day. Please stay blessed. Take care of yourselves. Amen. Family and friends, each time we gather together for worship, we bring ourselves before God with all that we are. We come with our prayers. We come dedicating ourselves to God's service. We come bearing witness. We come with our praise and our prayers. But we also come before God with our gifts. We know that God has given us all that we have. And God commands us that because we serve God, we serve others in God's name. Your continued faithfulness in giving allows us to continue our ministries here in Eldersburg and the ministries of the United Methodist Church around the world. Because of your faithfulness, we continue to be able to feed our neighbors in Eldersburg. Because of your faithfulness, we continue to be able to be a presence in this community, bringing God's love, bringing words of comfort, bringing care to your neighbors, to your friends to those on your doorstep in need of help. This is because you continue to be faithful. And so today, we invite you to continue your generosity through giving. Wesley Freedom, at our website, wesleyfreedom.org, has a link to give online. You can also mail in offerings to 961 Johnsville Road in Eldersburg, Maryland. Please give generously and give with cheerful hearts.
humble myself. Beloved, we leave this place trusting that God has an appointment for us this week, a time that we, like Mary, can be there, can mother someone in this world, can be the hands and the feet of Christ. So go with this commission that you might show God's love to all who you meet this week, that you might stand by them with the fierce love with which God stands by us. And may God's peace always be with you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.